are excited about that. So if you have been saved and never been baptized, uh, next Sunday morning we are baptizing. So please let me know or contact the church office um, this week, okay, so that we can get you the proper information and that we can be prepared for your baptism. Uh, next Sunday night we have a, a church business meeting. Everybody say, oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, all right. Um, hey, bud. All right, okay. Tyler is in the building, um, but uh, let's, uh, we're going to share some vision um, on a Sunday night with you and then go right into the business meeting. I promise you, you'll want to come. It's a very exciting business meeting, and so make plans to be here for that, to hear what God's got in store for New Life and New Brook Christian Academy over the next um, six months, but then also over the next year as far as um, church budget and school budget. So you make plans to be back for that. Um, I know it's the summertime. I know we're coming down the home stretch, but please be faithful to the house of God. We have God's man coming up, and uh, many of you have already signed up. I forgot the names on the church office um, this, uh, this morning, and so I'll have to do that next Sunday morning. We will pull names for the two men that we'll give the gift cards to, and so that'll be next Sunday. But uh, please sign up. Get registered. Uh, we're shooting for 500 men, and uh, you can help us with that. Not just get guys from our church, uh, but also we're trying to get people from the community, and men and teenagers and young, young people from the community. So make plans to attend and to bring a gag of people with you. All right? It's going to be a great time. And uh, then, of course, we've got uh, school starting back. We've got our concealed carry classes, a number of things going on. Baby dedication coming up in August. We'll be announcing those things uh, as they get a little closer, okay? How many of you got a nap this afternoon? Raise your hand. All right. And the rest of you, just uh, maybe you can wake up during fellowship time. So if you got a nap, try to find somebody during fellowship time that didn't get a nap, okay? Let's stand together and shake a couple of hands, and then we're going to sing uh, some worship sets together. As you make your way back to your seat, let's remain standing and let's sing together. Lift up your voice and let's sing to the Lord.
again, great singing tonight. If our ushers would go ahead and make their way forward, we'll take up our offering. Amen. Aren't you glad you served that God we just sang about? Amen. And uh, I think you sang a little bit louder. Maybe you actually listened this morning. Good job. Proud of you. So we appreciate you being here tonight. Appreciate what you give. Let's pray and let's ask the Lord's blessing on this offering and that God will use it to, uh, to further his kingdom and God will use it to meet our needs uh, here at our church. Brother Doug Morrison, lead us in prayer if you would. Amen. You may be seated. of the ages our God has been our shelter he's been our shield he's been our strength our fortress and we can confide and trust in him let's stand together and let's sing our song of the month it's the song of Moses
Lord Jesus, thank you for conquering death, hell, and the grave for us so that we could have life and we could have salvation. And it is only because of you. There's no other name given among men under heaven thereby which we must be saved. It is only by your name, the name of Jesus Christ. So thank you, Lord, for that promise and that gift. Lord Jesus, we pray that you would be with us tonight. Let us hear from your word and apply it to our lives and our hearts and live by it. We love you and we praise you for all that you've done and all you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Well, amen. It is good to have all of you here. Good to have uh, Brother Reuben Case and his dear wife with us tonight. Uh, Brother Reuben is the promotional man for the state of North Carolina and Freegal Baptist. And uh, this is the uh, first time you've been, at least since I've been here, in our pulpit. And, um, and I am thrilled uh, that they are here tonight and thrilled that he's able to come and preach for us. He is our new promotional man. Uh, he's been on the job just a few months. He was the pastor previous to that at the White Oak Hill Freegal Baptist Church uh, just outside of uh, Zebulon and Wendell. What, what do they actually call that? Bailey, yeah, and Bailey. Anybody know where Bailey is? Brother Keith, I'm sure you do. I hope you do. You pastored there. And so, um, but uh, anyway, it is a joy to have them. We love them. We are very excited uh, about um, him being uh, at the head of our state movement and um, traveling our state, encouraging our pastors, uh, steering so many of our events and uh, even some of the mission stuff that we do across the state. And we're just, we're thrilled to have Brother Reuben here tonight. Uh, he's going to come preach for us. Let's give him a new life welcome tonight as he comes. Thank you, Brother Scott. It is a joy to be here with you this evening and uh, to represent our North Carolina Association of Free Will Baptists. Just tell you a little bit about ourselves and what we uh, do here in our state, and then we'll get right into the message this evening. I'm so glad to have my wife of 33 and a half years with me this evening. She is able to travel with me most of the time, and it's always a joy uh, to have her in the service. Want to introduce our family right quick. We have uh, three children. The uh, ones on your left, Luke and Amanda, they pastor the Highland Drive Free Will Baptist Church in Lincolnton, North Carolina. Our youngest daughter and her husband, uh, Heather and Jonathan Huff, they are moving this week to Irwin, Tennessee, uh, be minister of music there. And our son and his wife, Camille, they are pastor of the um, Providence Free Will Baptist Church in Hampton, Virginia. So we thank the Lord for calling all three of our uh, children into full-time uh, Free Will Baptist Ministries. We are enjoying empty nests. They're grown and they're gone. Say amen. And the, the joy of them getting grown and gone is we have seven wonderful grandchildren, and we enjoy them, and they are a blessing uh, to us. And so just wanted to introduce our family to you. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be here. And the next slide just simply tell you a little bit about uh, what I do as the North Carolina Promotional Director. Uh, we serve our state. We have 159 churches in eight district associations. We cover from Waynesville to Wilmington, from the foothills to the sand hills. How many of you know there's a lot of real estate in North Carolina? And uh, we travel all over representing our state, promoting our state works, uh, being an liaison, so to speak, between uh, our churches and pastors sometimes that's looking for a pastor. I was at the National Convention last week in Kansas City, Missouri, and my telephone rang and I answered it. And this fellow was from a church here in North Carolina. Their pastor recently uh, resigned. He's relocating, and he didn't know what to do. And so that was one thing we was able to uh, help offer words of encouragement to them and give them a little bit of guidance. But uh, we represent our churches and promoting our state works, obviously promoting our Free Will Baptists, and we thank the Lord for North Carolina Free Will Baptists. Tell you just a little bit about them. Our, we have two missionaries. By the way, I want to mention this. Your pastor was recently put on our executive board back in June, so I'm in the presence of one of my boss men tonight, so I'm going to be on special behavior. So you'll get the good side of me tonight because of that. But anyway, uh, we appreciate Brother Scott and his wife and his family and known, have known them for many years, love them, and appreciate them. We have two state mission works in North Carolina. That is a joy, but it's also a burden to my heart. The fields are white in the harvest. 
And we need to flood North Carolina with Free Will Baptist uh, churches uh, spreading the gospel. Uh, we have Brother uh, Rakes and Sister Brenda Evans there in Ronit Rapids, North Carolina. They're continuing a the work. They just celebrated June the 5th, their ninth anniversary. A uh, work that Brother Fred and Sister Joan Carraway went there nine years ago to start, and they're continuing that work. You continue to pray for them as they're trying to go self-supporting. Our newest missionaries, Brother uh, John and Sister April Moran, and their family, they have just recently located to Apex about a year ago, and uh, they're starting a work there, and you pray for them. They're out on deputation raising funds and uh, prayer support to start the work there, so you pray for them. Uh, we have our women at for Christ here in the state of North Carolina. They're doing a wonderful job uh, promoting the work here uh, in our state. Uh, and uh, uh, they were number two as far as membership was concerned, uh, 426 members strong. I want you to notice these numbers here because in 2015, these 423, 26 ladies gave eight, over $83,000 in, in, in projects uh, last year. So we thank the Lord for our Women Active for Christ here in North Carolina. Uh, their 2016, 2017 projects are listed there. And so we thank the Lord for them. You pray for them as they do the work there. We have a, a youth group, a youth, our youth ministries here in North Carolina. We're excited about them. Good to see these young people in this service tonight. And, and I appreciate as at my age, Brother Scott said, I'm the new promotional director. I'm enjoying that word new, and I'm going to get as much mileage out of that as I possibly can. Uh, but so, so being a pastor, I've not been able to go to a lot of these events. And this past April, I was able to attend the state competition and see these young people and go with them to the national and see them uh, compete on a national level. We had 75 plus groups or individuals from North Carolina that competed in Bible memorization, music, arts, from K-5 all the way through a senior in high school. I saw this little kindergarten fellow was quoting some verses, and I said, man, I can't even remember my phone number, and he's quoting all them, all them Bible verses. So it's exciting to see what God is doing in our young people's lives, and your church here uh, has a vibrant youth ministry as well. We thank the Lord for that. Right now, Bible schools and camps and all those different kinds of things uh, going on. So we thank the Lord for our youth ministries. Our next slide there is our Benevolence Fund. I manage that. Every Free Will Baptist pastor, his wife, and family, uh, Christian school workers, full-time Free Will Baptist workers can be a part of this. It's sort of like an insurance. When a loved one passes away, uh, those funds are channeled through my office, and we uh, help a spouse out at a time of need. How many of you know during that time that's a tremendous blessing? Uh, to be able to have some cash on hand to help with some expenses, and so we have that available in our state. North Carolinians in 2015 was the number one state giving to total denominational ministries. We thank the Lord for that, and we are excited about that. If you'll notice the top two numbers there, we were number one in giving both to international missions and to home missions. That tells us that we believe in missions, so to speak. We put our money where our mouth is, and that's exciting. But total ministries, we gave $1.8 million in 2015. Now, how many of you know this is the getting towards the end of July. So the totals are going to be coming in here in a little while, and we need to keep up that momentum, say amen. So thank you for what you do in giving to denominational causes. What can you do for us? Just want you to pray for us. We encourage you to remember us as we pray and as we represent our state association, as we work to promote our works here. We need your prayers as we travel. To help you remember to pray for us, there's a little magnet on the table out in the foyer. I'd encourage you to go by and pick one of those up. Also, you can support us. Uh, Brother Billy Keith was promotional director for nine years prior to my coming into the office, and he started raising Billy Bucks. And that's simply when you see a dollar bill with a letter B on it, uh, you save that, turn it in, and that helps offset our budget expenses. Well, my name's not Billy. My name's Kaysen. So we decided we'd raise some Kaysen cash. <laughs> But uh, when I came into the office, they said, no, we don't like case and cash. We want to raise the billy bucks. 
Last year, 2015, Billy Bucks brought in between $16,000 dollars $18,000. I was astounded by that, but that helps to offset our budget. Sunday school classes, uh, youth groups can get involved in this, save those dollars and send them in to us. That helps us. Uh, offerings like your church does. We even have a PayPal account linked to our website. You can give. Uh, through that, we appreciate your support. Also, we want you to follow us on social media. We have a Facebook page. Uh, I tried to check in tonight, Brother Scott, but I guess we're so far out in the boonies I couldn't quite get that done, but it's probably my fault. But anyway, we are on social media. We encourage you to follow us. Go to our website. you find some interesting things there about our denomination and some uh, information you can use uh, for that. And most of all, sign up to receive our newsletter. There's a little envelope link there, and uh, you sign up to receive. We put out a newsletter every Friday evening. Uh, that's our goal, and we try to give uh, updates about what's going on uh, in our state work, announcements, revivals, and uh, your God's Men's Conference. We've been announcing that. We had a church recently got a, a new steeple. We promoted that. So all we can get our hands on to announce and let folks know what's going on, uh, you'll find in that newsletter. Also want to invite you to sign up for One Magazine. This is the official publication of the National Association. How many of you already received One Magazine? Let me see your hands. Several of you do. I learned at the National last week it has over 55,000 subscribers. Other denominations are jealous of our publication. It is first class, and I have a sign-up sheet on the table out back. If you're not receiving that, just sign your name. Best thing about it, it's free. And I have found out Free Will Baptist like free stuff. Say amen. So you sign up. I'll get your name in, and you'll start receiving that. We just wanted to come by tonight say thank you for having us in the service. Thank you for what you do for North Carolina uh, Free Will Baptist. It's a joy and honor to be here with you this evening. If you'll take God's Word and turn to Acts chapter number 1, if you're willing and able and wouldn't mind standing in reverence to the reading of God's Word as we look into the Scriptures this evening, Acts chapter number 1. Sure is good to see Miss Emily Rager here this evening. She teaches in your school. While I was her pastor. And when they first came to North Carolina, we love and appreciate the Rager family. Acts chapter number 1, I'm going to be reading a few verses of Scripture here. Set the pace, I hope, for the message God's laid on my heart. And, um, and then we'll be referencing Ephesians 5.18, Colossians 3.16, if you prefer uh, to turn to those passages as we get there. Acts chapter 1, I want to begin in verse 4. I'll guide you along as I read these verses. Acts chapter 1, verse 4, And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not, part from, not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, Ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Go over to chapter 2, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly... There came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with one another, with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. One more verse, if you turn over to chapter 4. I'm sure you'll see the sequence of these verses I'm reading. Chapter 4, if you'll notice, please, verse 31. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And watch this. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and spake the word of God 
with boldness. Lord, being my helper this evening, I want to preach for a few minutes on the subject, be filled with the Spirit. Would you bow in prayer with me and for me? Father, the message tonight will fall upon deaf ears unless the Spirit of God gives His anointing to us. Father, we're fleshly creatures. And Father, we don't have the tendency or the capability at times to listen and pay attention as we should. Father, I pray that you would arrest our attention this evening and for the next few moments as we put our feet under the table of God's Word, I pray your sweet Holy Spirit speak to us. Lord, I pray you'd preach on the inside as I try to preach on the outside. Lord, I pray that you would help us in this subject this evening to get a fresh glimpse of being filled with the Spirit of God. We'll thank you and praise you in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Thank you, you may be seated. One of the reasons that I chose to read the section of scriptures that I did this evening was because of its emphasis on being filled with the Spirit of God. You'll notice that Jesus told them in the last chapter of the Gospel of Luke to go and tarry in the city of Jerusalem until they were endued with power from on high. You'll see that they did just that. The reason we read those first few verses, they, they were assembled with them and commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father. The promise was that they would be baptized with water and be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Chapter 2, the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit of God came upon them. And the Bible says that they were all filled with the Holy Spirit of God. In chapter 4, they were meeting in prayer. And the Bible says that they were all filled with the Spirit of God. Church, can I tell you this evening without apology, without stutter, without stammer, that we need a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit of God in our churches and in our lives. Vance Habner said, we're not going to move this world by criticism of it, nor conformity to it, but by the combustion within it of lives ignited by the Spirit of God. As we study the early church and what a blessing it is to study the Acts of the Apostles, the early church had none of the things that we think are so essential to success today. And I thank God for all the nice things we have. Say amen. We just buried my precious daddy a month ago, and he pastored in this denomination for 68 years. I've heard all the stories of how things used to be in the 30s and 40s and 50s, and you call those the good old days. I like my Wi-Fi and my iPad and my smart TV and my dumb phone and all of those kinds of things. Amen. <laughs> These cars that are taught to you and drive themselves. But anyway... We do live in this world. We're not to be of this world, Jesus said in John 17. But, but the early church had none of the things that we think are so essential for success today. Yet the church, the Bible tells us, won multitudes to Christ, and they saw many churches established throughout the Roman world. Oh, I thank God for every one of our 159 churches in our eight districts, but I'm telling you the fields are wide into harvest. We could stand another 159 starting tonight. We need to make an impact on this world in which we are living. The early church was filled with the Spirit of God. Thus they had the power of God. By the way, you won't have the power of God unless you have the Spirit of God. It was the Spirit of the living God that was energizing them for ministry. They were, as Havner referred to, ignited by the Holy Spirit of God. But I've got good news for you this evening. The same power that was available to them is the same power that is available to us tonight. When asked by a young preacher what they thought to be the greatest need facing the church, the great revivalist Dr. Jonathan Goforth, and the scholarly Dr. G. Campbell Morgan answered emphatically, listen to this, the Holy Spirit. The church hardly knows the Spirit. Let that sink in. The church hardly knows the Spirit. Can I tell you this evening, we must know the Spirit. We must be filled with the Spirit we must be filled with the Spirit in order to be a devoted, a growing, 
and fruitful Christian. I don't know about you, but I long to be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. I long to have the power of God on my life in service, not only in ministry, but to live my life in this world. H.B. Charles Jr. said, and this left such an impact on me, he said it would be a tragedy to live and die and go to hell without Christ. I want to pause here long enough and remind the church this evening that people who die lost without Christ spend an eternity in a Christless hell. Well, how we need to be filled with compassion for the lost about us. What a tragedy it will be to live and die and go to hell without Christ. But it was this next phrase that drove it home to me. He said, it's also a tragedy to live and to die and go to heaven without being filled with the Holy Spirit. In my three-plus decades of ministry, I've always sort of grappled with the carnal Christian, where to put them. Does a carnal Christian even exist? A fleshly Christian, a person who's just saved. And early on in my ministry, Brother Scott, I preached a sermon bogged down between Calvary and Pentecost because I believe that's where a lot of folks are. They got saved at Calvary, but they got bogged down and they don't have a feeling of the Holy Spirit. Oh, they have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I hope to make that clear this evening, the difference. But a tragedy to live and die and go to heaven without ever being filled with the Spirit of God, without ever having experienced what it is to be filled with the Spirit of God. You go with me to Ephesians chapter 5. I want us to notice quickly. Paul and all the Word of God shares with us how to be filled with the Spirit of God, a verse that I'm sure you're well acquainted with. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 18, Paul writing to the church at Ephesus said, And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but, what church? Be filled with the Spirit. I'm not going to take a lot of time on this point, but it is part of the verse, say amen, so I believe I'll preach it. I believe Paul gives us the contrast to spirit and filling. Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess. Literally, he is saying stop getting drunk with wine. I've always been proud to be a free will Baptist. I was born and bred free will Baptist. When I die, I'll be free will Baptist dead. But I was especially grateful this national convention that our body voted on a resolution to reaffirm our stand on total abstinence. That our church covenant declares, and by the way, I don't have to know a lot about New Life Church to know that you have the same Free Will Baptist covenant that every Free Will Baptist church has across this denomination. And it plainly states that we will not sanction the use and sale of intoxicating beverages. Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 1, Wine is a mocker, and strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. I want you to see the contrast. Paul says, Just as a drunken person is intoxicated, is filled with uh, this substance, so be filled with the Spirit of God. By the way, I, I, I personally... I personally don't like the phrase, let's get drunk on the Spirit. I just don't like that. It's such a contrast in, in the intoxication. A drunken person is under the influence, and so is a Spirit-filled person. I get that, but the two realities are antithetical. They're directly opposed. Furthermore, for what it's worth, intoxicating beverages will cause you to lose control. A feeling of the Spirit of God causes you to have control. That's why it's a contrast. But then he gets to the heart of the matter. We see, secondly, the call to spirit and filling. Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. 
The verb field is plerao in the Greek, and it means to bring something to its level of containment. To bring something to its level of containment. In other words, something that is filled doesn't have room for anything else. It means to be filled with something that is the dominating presence, the controlling influence, the driving force of your life. You can be filled with various things. Let me illustrate. In John, I'm sorry, Luke chapter number 20, the Bible tells us that Jesus was filled filled with wisdom same root word filled with wisdom Acts chapter 13 and verse 45 says that the opponents of Paul were filled with jealousy in 2 Corinthians 7 4 Paul said I'm I'm filled with comfort this filling is is something that brings something to its exclusivity its totality it, it has a dominating presence a controlling influence it is the driving force of your life i want to pause here and i'll ask you before i'm done this evening are you filled with the holy spirit like that it's the dominating presence it's the controlling influence in your life I want, to, I want us to notice a few things I believe the text implies. Number one, in the original text, it is a command. It is not a suggestion. You see, the ministry of the Holy Spirit of God is a comfort or a paraclete. I get that. But here Paul is giving a specific command, not a suggestion. The commands carry the same weight. It's just as sinful for a Christian not to be filled with the Spirit of God as it is for someone to get drunk on intoxicating beverages. Oh, but we love to point our fingers at the drunk crowd, don't we? Pardon my language. <laughs> but we're sort of soft on the un unfilled Christian that's not filled with the Spirit of God. How many of you know that when, when it's a command, you break a command, it's sin. It's a command to be filled with the Spirit of God. It's not a suggestion. I'm commanded to be filled with the Spirit of God. Number two, I believe it implies that a filling of the Spirit of God is for everyone and not just a few. How many of you know that when Pastor Scott Coghill stands behind this pulpit and declares, Thus saith the Lord, he ought to be filled with the Spirit of God. And I declare to you this evening as you sit there in the pews and you listen to the man of God declare the word of God being filled with the Spirit of God, you too should be filled with the Spirit of God to receive it and hear it. It's for everybody. All Christians are commanded to be filled with the Spirit of God. It's commanded. It's for everyone. It is, it is repeated. There's not a permanent feeling of the Holy Spirit of God when you get saved. And here's what I was referencing a moment ago. That's baptism of the Spirit of God. When a person receives Christ as his or her Lord or Savior, they're baptized into the family of God. That's salvation. That's not sanctification. Sanctification is being filled with the Spirit of God, growing in our relationship with the Lord. And how many of you know that we have times of backsliding, prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I serve? Sort of reminds me of the fellow who stood up in the revival meeting every fall and he was called on to pray, Lord, fill us in this revival. <laughs> Oh, Lord, fill us in this revival. Next year, fall revival came along. He's called on to pray, Lord, fill us. Oh, Lord, fill us in this revival. Next fall, come along. He's called on to pray, Lord, fill us in this revival. Old fella got tired of it. He stood up and said, Lord, don't do it. He leaks. <laughs> he had seen him the rest of the year say amen. <laughs> well, I, I, I got news for you. I leak sometimes. And by the way, I got a classic Bible illustration for you. Never dawned on me about this before, Brother Matt. Now, I know chapter and verses are not inspired, but they're beneficial to us. In Matthew chapter number 16, Jesus asked the question, Whom do men say that I am? Peter gave that great declaration in verse 16 of Matthew 16, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Now, how many of you know in our King James Version we don't have tone inflections? I wish we did. 
And I don't know about you, but when I get to heaven, I want to hear some Bible in its natural setting. <laughs> I want to hear the sound effects of Goliath thumping the ground, say amen. And that's just one example of which the appetite of what I'm talking about. But I'd like to think that, that Peter was a little emphatic when he says, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. The greatest declaration ever being Jesus, the Messiah, the King of kings, Lord of lords. Jesus, thou art the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God. As a matter of fact, what did Jesus say to him? Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed this unto thee. Did you ever notice before you get out of the chapter, in verse number 23, Jesus is telling the disciples he's going to be going to the, to the cross, he's going to Calvary, he's going to suffer brutally at the hands of the Roman guards. And Jesus is telling the disciples about what does Peter do? The same one who just emphatically declared that he was the Son of God. Be it far from thee, Lord. It's not going to happen to you. You listen to what Jesus said to him. Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou art an offense to me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men. This was the same Peter who in verse 16 declared him to be the Christ, the Son of the living God. I'll tell you what's happened, and Peter was leaking. I don't know you, but I know you leak. I know your pastor leaks. I leak. In other words, the filling of the Spirit of God is not permanent. When you get saved, there must be multiple fillings of the Holy Spirit of God. It's a command, not a suggestion. It's for everyone, not just a few. It's repeated. It's not permanent. But I want you to go lastly to Colossians chapter number 3. We're commanded to be filled with the Spirit of God, but Paul, interestingly enough, in that great passage in Ephesians 5, 18, doesn't tell us how. But in the parallel passage of Ephesians 5, Paul tells us in Colossians 3, Let the word of Christ, verse 16, Colossians 3, 16, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another, psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Very simply put, being filled with the Spirit of God, the Spirit-filled life is the result of obedience to the Word of God. F.B. Meyer put it best when he said, God does not fill with His Holy Spirit those who believe in the fullness of the Spirit are those who desire Him. And I've experienced both of those. I believe in it, and I desire it. But Meyer said he only fills with fills those with the Spirit who obey Him, who obey Him. What am I telling you tonight, church? I'm telling you, show me a person who lives in this Word, and I'll show you a person who's filled with the Spirit of God. Let's think for just a moment the word dwell. Not going to take a lot of time here, but I just want to emphasize the word dwell. You have a copy of God's Word in your hand tonight. I thank God for that. I thank God that we have the written Word of God. We have it available to us in a language we can understand. We have the inspired, infallible, and errant Word of God. Look at here. I, I'm not hard to miss. If this thing sits somewhere in your car or the house or in the shop all week long, you're not dwelling in it. By the way, this is not just an instrument to come to church and keep your birth record in. I want to remind you tonight without apology, without stutter, without stammer, that this is a living book. It is the Word of God. So here's what it means to dwell in the Word. It means that you're living the Word. You're living the Word. That's what the word dwell means, to reside. Show me a person who is obedient to the Word of God, who's living in the Word, whose steps are ordered by the Lord. They're the ones who are being filled with the Spirit of God. It's imperative, church, that we be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. And I want to ask you tonight, are you filled with the Spirit? 
You know, children sometimes can give us the best sermon illustrations. Preacher came home one day, had two little girls, and every evening he came home, they'd run to him. That's a precious sight, isn't it? It's even better when the grand youngins run to you, say amen. Because they run to you, and then they run away from you and go home and say amen right there. <laughs> Chase that little rabbit in my illustration. But anyway, so one little girl wrapped her arms around daddy's leg, and she announced to the other girl, I've got all of daddy. But what she didn't notice was her daddy had reached down and picked up the other little girl. And the other little girl was in his arms. She looked down at the girl holding daddy by the leg and announced to her, you may have all of daddy, but daddy has all of me. Church, I want to leave you with this tonight. Just don't have Jesus. Let Jesus have you. J.C. Ryle said, and I close with this, boast not of Christ's work for you unless you can show us the Spirit's work in you. Don't boast about what He's done for you unless you're living a life of what He's doing in you and through you. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. Let's quietly and reverently stand to our feet. I'm going to lead us in a word of prayer, and I'm going to turn the service back over to Scott to lead you in an invitation you're familiar with. Church, I want to challenge you this evening. Are you filled with the Holy Spirit of God? Father, as best I could tonight, I preach the message you've laid on my heart. Father, I pray this evening, if there's one under the sound of our voice, They've never been baptized by the Spirit. That means they've never been saved. I pray your sweet Holy Spirit draw them to a saving knowledge of you before it's everlasting too late. But, oh, God, we need in our lives, in our churches, to be filled with the Spirit of God. Lord, this was very convicting to me as I read and studied this. The church does not know the filling of the Holy Spirit. God, would you bring an old-fashioned conviction on us this evening? We've got to let go of having you around the leg, and we've got to get in your arms, and we've got to say you have all of us there is to have of us. Brother Scott. My question for you tonight is this. Do you desire to be filled with the Spirit? Do you have a desire for the Spirit of God to work in you? If that's your heartbeat tonight and you want a greater hunger, I don't want you to raise your hand. I just want you to step out from where you are and get around this altar and you beg the Holy Spirit, Oh, Lord, fill us. Fill us, Lord. Don't tarry. Matt's going to sing. God speaks to your heart. You obey right now. You come. Speak. Last question, then we're going to pray together. So if you're here, you stay here and let's pray together. But before we do, you're here tonight and you're still in your seat. You'd say, Preacher, I've got some needs and I really would covet your prayers this week. 
Anybody like that, you just want to lift up your hand. Say, Preacher, just remember me as you pray this week. I see that hand. And I see that one and that one. I see that one. I see that one. I see that one. Thank you. Anybody else? Preacher, just got some needs. As God brings you to my mind, I promise you, I'll be praying for you this week. Father, please fill us with your spirit. Lord, what Brother Reuben said was the title of a sermon years ago was a powerful statement. And how true it is that so many people get saved. But for whatever reason, we get bogged down between Calvary and Pentecost. And Lord, may that not be true of us. May we have a fresh purpose in our heart tonight to be filled, controlled, consumed, overwhelmed by the Spirit of the living God. May you fall fresh on us, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, if God spoke to your heart tonight, would you say amen? Amen. I, um, what Brother Reuben does not know uh, is I've been preaching through the book of Acts. And um, we're finishing up chapter 5. And you, you cannot, as, as the body of Christ, we cannot, as the children of God, hear enough of that kind of message. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed recently, but our world is getting real bad. Our country is a scary place to live right now. And uh, the only way that you or I will ever be sustained is by the Spirit of God that this man just preached about. And so I pray that we will be purposed to be filled uh, with the Spirit. It's good to have you guys. I'm going to ask both of you if you would to go to the back and, and please. Um, by the way, being on the executive committee, I don't feel like I'm his boss. I still feel like he's mine. So, um, but uh, you pray for him. Uh, this is a new ministry for their family, but I do believe what God calls you to, he equips you for. And I know that he is already well equipped um, to be uh, a minister of ministers to our state. And so please go by and encourage them. Um, again, don't forget about the announcements, guys. Please sign up. I know you're tired of hearing about it, but sign up. And this week, try to think of somebody. Pray through someone that you can invite. and that you. Hey, listen, even if you've got to pay their way, say, Preacher, I don't have the money. Well, if you don't have the money to pay somebody's way that you invite, I'll pay for it, and I'll borrow the money from William Davis, all right? <laughs> so uh, you, um, just, you, you make it happen, okay? Shake a couple hands, consider yourself dismissed. God bless you.